Traffic Centurion 6446 Whiskey departing, runway 30 left uh, across the departure, Tracy. Tracy, traffic and uh, Skyhawk 254 left crosswind, 30 no Tracy. Oh, I can't wait till my Centurion's back. Alright, so as I mentioned over the radio just there, talking to the other Centurion, my Centurion is still in the shop. And I wanted to come up here and get some practice in. It's been two months, two and a half months since I dropped it off. Um, two and a half months been in the shop. Wanted to go over what, what's wrong with it, why it's been in the shop for so long. Oh, bird. So the reason my um, my Centurion's in the shop is it had, uh, I took it in for its annual about two months early, uh, at the beginning of February. And let me go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna switch over to NorCal here. NorCal approach, Skyhawk, 51254. Uh, Five and a half miles southeast of Tracy, 3,300, climbing 3,500, maneuvering in the area. 51254, North Carolina approach, Roger. North Carolina approach, 739, you're falling about 3,000. It's a busy day up here. It's a nice, beautiful day, though. North Carolina approach, knockdown, perimeter 3001. 3001, now you're falling about Probably 20. Uh, 51254, did you just want to let us know that you're maneuvering in that area? Do you have a request for flight following? We can help you. Uh, affirmative. I would like uh, traffic advisories for the area for 51254. 254 squad 0363. 0363 254. North 254, radar contact 1-5 miles southeast, Christian southwest of the Modesto Airport. Black altimeter. 3001. 3001 position checks, 51254. Alright, so what happened, what's going on with my airplane is I took it in for its uh, annual service two months early because I had 100 hours on the TAC uh, since I purchased it. I purchased it in August and I put 100 hours on it. I uh, flew all over the place. I flew to uh, Las Vegas twice. I flew up to Oregon once. I flew up to uh, Seattle once. I just put a whole lot of time on the airplane. Since I put so much time on the airplane in six months, I took it in for its yeah, annual inspection. Go, Mike North Carolina approach, maintain VFR report oil is inbound. I'll turn you guys down just a hair. They drained the oil and they found a lot of oil in the drain plug and carbon. Uh, now, the 520 Continental engine, I, TSIO 520, makes a lot of carbon. It gets really hot. And the valve guides get really hot, so the oil carbonizes a lot, and it just kind of flakes off uh, into the oil. No big deal. But they found a lot of metal in there as well, some big chunks and stuff. So what they did was they put a bore scope down through the uh, fill hole in the top of the airplane or the top of the engine, and looked inside to see what was going on. First they looked in all the cylinders, most of those looked really good. Um, all the cylinders were making good compression, uh, 70, uh, 70 plus over 80, every single one of them. Because they were all making good compression, they wouldn't have done anything except they found all of that it, uh, ferrous metal in the drain plug. So they shove a bore scope down through the fill hole and start looking around inside the engine compartment. Or inside the engine itself, rather. And they found that at least two of the uh, lifters had uh, pitting. Um, what are they? They call it spalling. Yeah. And so one of the things, I started doing some Googling and stuff, and I found out that there is a, a 
Service bulletin, service information directive for the aircraft. Uh, SID 05. One Bravo. And it is, uh, it supersedes one Alpha. And uh, the subject is inspection guidelines for CM crankshafts and hydraulic lifters. And it basically tells you what to do. So in the inspection, it tells you to inspect the lifters on the Continental engine. Alpha. On the Continental engine, you can actually inspect the lifters by just simply taking the lifters out through the sides of the case. Uh, you remove the uh, rocker arms, you remove the uh, push tubes, you remove the push tube, uh, or the push rods, the push tubes, you remove all of that, and you can inspect the... Um, excuse me. You can inspect the lifters themselves. And what they found is that most of the lifters, and I'll show a picture because I've got one right here, most of the lifters had some level of spalling. So what we decided to do, that we inspected the camshaft through the holes, so all 12 holes, all 12... pretty much gonna hug the hills all the way to Mammoth? All 12 cam lifters, uh, or cam lobes, we, we inspected uh, pretty closely. And there's still a lot of meat on them. I mean, there is only 500 hours on this engine. Five miles westbound, looks like they might be descending into Kingland, indicating 2,300 descending. So what we decided to do was flush the engine out um, without splitting the case. Now, there may be, you know, it's not going to live, it's, it's not going to make it to the 1600 hour TBO with that case, with that engine, with those bearings, because there is some damage caused by the spalling and material from before. But, I don't have fifty, sixty thousand dollars to spend on a new engine in, uh, install right now, overhaul. So what we're going to do, or uh, what we've already done, is order new, new lifters. Six three, Charlie. Uh, we have traffic in sight. Six three, Charlie. Roger. We order new lifters and gaskets and a single push tube and all of that. But here's the thing that happened with that. Apparently. All right, so anyway, as I was saying, we we ordered all of these lifters, and we called up a bunch of places. Apparently, there wasn't any available, or there was very few. Made an order, and then we got one lifter on that first order. Great, come on. Um, and then four, and then like a week later, four more lifters showed up. Come on. Two miles off direction, indicating 4,200 connect approach, 125.25. And then, uh... So four more lifters showed up. Finally, about a week, or two weeks ago, the rest of the lifters showed up. All the engine parts are there. They had to buy one push rod because it was out of spec. The new lifters have 25 thousandths of an inch more material on them. Uh, the old lifters, according to the logbook, were remanufactured uh, lifters. So it looks like what they did was they ground them down and then re-put the uh, coating on them for uh, the anti-rust material. Let's see here. What does it say that material is? Let's do some, uh, let's go ahead and treat this one as a clearing turn and then we'll do some steep turns here in a minute. And what's your request? So, um, and apparently this is a, an issue. The, uh, if you use the, or if you, if you don't use the engine, what happens is, is the lubricating and protective oils that go onto the, onto the, all the parts on the inside starts to drain off. And as it drains off, it exposes bare steel. So when it's, uh, when it's bare steel, in the elements, there's water in the engine, there's water in the atmosphere, and it's bare iron steel so it can rust and oxidize. And then all of a sudden you start it up and that rust starts to get bashed off of it. So then it starts to fall off and then it gets pitted. And that causes additional damage. So you've got pieces of metal that are bashing together.
ordered the parts, all the parts are back together. Engine's mostly back together, we're waiting on a gasket. The airplane is still being worked on. It has been 10 weeks now. It should be, since the engine's back together and the parts are, uh, we just need to fix the hydraulic pump and get a battery. And then I should be ready for a test flight. So I'll be swinging the gear, uh, hopefully in a week. Hopefully this week. Uh, but it seems kind of like the uh, two weeks from Money Pit. I'll put a video right here. Think right there. It is what it is. It's going to be expensive. I'm hoping to have my airplane back in a couple of weeks. Really like to have it back this week. I really, I want it back. It, it's a beautiful day. I have, other than this is my second flight since dropping it off, and I'm in a rental. Now, with this aircraft right here that I'm sitting in, I have flown this aircraft. Let's go ahead and look at my logbook. I did all of my primary training in this aircraft, or not all of it, but most of it. This was my preferred aircraft during during the primary training. I had. 101 hours in this airplane. Uh, approach is giant 7704, we're descending out of 9000 for 8000. 254 would like to cancel. Okay. November 254, radar service is terminated. Squawk VFR, frequency change for you, good day. Squawk VFR, thanks for the help, 254. Streetsy traffic, Skyhawk 51254, 10 miles to the southeast. We'll remain west of the interstate, maneuver 45 left downwind for 30. Traffic, Niner. Centurion, Niner, 4077, we're left base, runway 30, full stop, back taxi, uh, Tracy. For this flight, I did perform several commercial maneuvers from the ACS, such as steep turns, steep spirals, shondals, but I wanted to keep this video relevant to the engine maintenance and annual. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Thank you for watching.